The Abbott family first appeared in 2018's A Quiet Place, directed by John Krasinski. They are fighting against a race of aliens known as Death Angels, who are almost immune to harm and will destroy anything that makes a sound. A Quiet Place Part 2 picked up where the first film left off, following further survivors as they dealt with the extraterrestrials. Next up, A Quiet Place, the prequel. On the first day of the alien invasion in New York City, two new characters named Sam and Eric are thrust into the midst of the mayhem. A new perspective on the horrifying invasion of the Death Angels and their effect on a thriving metropolis is presented in this prequel. In the second film, we also get a glimpse of the first survivors who would go on to establish the island colony. I am here to immerse myself in the film's powerful and tragic final. They reach Harlem after Eric locates the medication Sam needs. Poor Sam. His beloved Patsy's Pizzeria has been closed for quite some time. What if in the midst of an extraterrestrial invasion, you arrive to your beloved spot, only to discover it closed? What a shame. Sam has a sense of being bewildered and disheartened. Her dad used to play piano at a jazz club, and Eric thinks they should go there. This section struck a chord with me. Her dad will be very honored by this touching tribute. While there, Eric stops into a neighboring grocery to pick up some inexpensive pizza, which he then returns to Sam. Further, in an effort to brighten her last hours, he suggests that she put on a silent magic performance. As they discover joy and serenity at the jazz club, this scenario is both painful and therapeutic. Reality sets in after a while. Eric is escorted to a boat carrying survivors by Sam. They trade coats so each other may always remember the other. Eric freaks out because the death angels are drawn to the boat's horn and all the noise it makes. In an effort to reassure him and ensure Frodo's safety, Sam gives Eric her service cat, Frodo. After that, she gives Eric an opportunity by creating a racket with a crowbar, which distracts the Death Angels. In order to get away, what a courageous step, I must say. At this point, I felt like I could not breathe. The Angels of Doom are pursuing Eric as he hurries to the boat. He manages to evade their clutches by leaping into the sea at the last possible second. He and Frodo are dragged into the boat by the passengers and he discovers a letter from Sam in his pocket. After she expresses her gratitude for everything, she orders him to watch out for Frodo. Leaving New York City, Eric and the other survivors set sail. I broke down in tears at this point. That was a profound moment. At the conclusion of the film, Sam is shown walking down the street with a portable speaker, listening to music on her iPod. Reflecting on her transformation over the last several days, she removes her earbuds and lets Nana Simone's feeling good play loudly. As the screen goes dark, a death angel materializes behind her. Even if we don't see her demise, it's evident that she has decided to end her life voluntarily rather than allowing cancer to claim her. The death angel, I hope, brought an end to her agony swiftly and compassionately. That was such a heartbreaking conclusion. The choice Sam made to confront the Death Angel head-on as that empowering music played resonated with me. She finds her own path and finds peace in the end, which is a perfect match for her character. Impressive film. This film was just what I needed since I've been wanting to hear the truth about what transpired prior to the first film. The adventures of the other characters were fascinating to me. Frodo was a wonderful addition to the plot, and I loved how Sam and Eric became closer. In your opinion, how did the film conclude? In your opinion, did Sam make it through? Please share your thoughts in comments below. So guys, before winding up, remember to like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.